In this video, we will be discussing about break, continue and nested loop. So this is going to be the third part of chapter 6 and we will be completing chapter 6 with this video. We have a separate video coming out in which we will be explaining uh, selected programs uh, based on the concepts that we have studied in chapter 6. So let us start now. Now first we will be discussing about break statement. So break statement is used to exit from a loop. So when the break statement is executed, the control comes out of the for or while loop. So break statement terminates the current loop. The execution resumes from the first statement after the loop. Right. So when we see the example, you will understand it. So break statement alters the normal flow of program inside a loop. Right. So how you write a break statement, you just have to write the keyword break. So when the program sees this word break, the immediate loop uh, which breaks belongs to will be terminated. Right. Will be terminated and the control will come out of the loop. Now to better understand the break statement, we will have a sample for loop here. So here again, see for i in range 1 to 11 and this loop will run from 1 to 3 up till 10, right? So this uh, loop will execute 10 times. The box uh, that I have represented here with some lines is actually the statements inside the for loop. So this box together, you can call it as the body of the for loop, right? Now assume that I am writing this for loop for finding out something. So if you want to terminate the execution of this loop just after three statement, you can write a break statement over here and then for loop will start. It will execute the first statement, the second statement, the third statement, and then it will see the break. Then control will come out of for loop and whatever statement is written after the for loop will be executed. So here you can understand just by writing a break statement inside for loop doesn't make any sense, right? Because there is no point in writing these two lines this two statement after the break because this two statement will never get executed right because the break will just push the control out of the for loop so normally you use break statement using a condition check so for example assume that you are waiting for a particular situation or a particular value to be assigned to a variable to stop the loop right so in that case you can put break inside an if condition by checking if the value of i equal to equal to 3 then i will break otherwise i will not do that so this is how you actually use a break statement inside a for loop or a while loop right so initially you can understand here the value 1 will be stored into i so now these three statements will be executed it will test whether the value of i is 3 so this is false so break will not execute so following the other statement inside the for loop will get executed the control will go back to 4 again next the value of i will be assigned value 2 again here you can see this condition will be false right so break will not be executed uh, all the statement inside the four will get executed the control will go back to four next time the value of i will become three right so now what happens the first three statements will be executed then it will check the if condition but this time the if condition evaluates to true right so now the statement inside if will be executed so break will get executed uh, so the following statement will not get executed and break will push the control out of for loop uh, to the subsequent statements inside the program right so this is how the break statement works inside a loop so you can change for with while so now let us see a sample program now in this slide, we are going to study about a sample program. Now this program is used to print numbers less than five 
in any given range. First, I'll create a for loop with a control variable num in range 1 to 10. All right, so you should understand the numbers actually generated by this range is 1, 2, 3, 4, up till 9. All right, up till 9. It will not go to 10. Uh, because it will stop at 9, right? It will not reach 10. One number less than the stop variable. So now, inside my for loop, I have an if condition check, and inside if, I have the break. If the value of this variable num is greater than or equal to 5, then you have to break, right? So you should understand the body of for loop starts from this if, until the sprint the last print statement is outside of the for loop because you can see they are intended the same so they belong to the same level so the last print statement is outside of for loop so now let us start the execution first uh, the value of num is going to be one so i will check whether one is greater than or equal to five so this is false so break will not get executed the control will come to this print and i will print the value of num which is one so that is going to be my output and then i will i will print one is less than five okay then i will go back to my for loop again now next time I will take the second value from range value 2 will be loaded to control variable num then I will check 2 is greater than or equal to 5 again it is false so break will not get executed I will go to the print statement here so it will print 2 is less than 5 okay again I will go to the for loop I will take the next value which is 3 then I will check whether 3 is greater than 5 again it is false break will not be executed i will come to the print statement inside for loop it will print three is less than five i will go back to four again uh, next i will take value four to num and now i will check whether four is greater than or equal to five again it is false break will not be executed i'll come to this print statement i will print the output uh, four uh, is less than five okay and now next time the value 5 will be loaded to control variable num and now i will check whether 5 is greater than or equal to 5 so now you see this condition will evaluate to true so now the break statement will be executed and now control will come out of the break statement to the print statement outside of for loop so now the for loop is finished right now this print statement will print out of for loop uh, thank you so now let us run this program and see the output all right our program is ready so first time i'm going to run by commenting this if and break statement all right so assume that these two lines are not there now in this case my print statement will print uh, all the numbers starting from 1 to uh, 9 all right and finally it will print this last line and it will exit so now let us run this program uh, so now you can see the for loop has finished printing all the numbers in the range and then it came out of the for loop and printed the last line out of for loop thank you all right now let us include the break so i'm going to remove the comment of my if condition and my break I will save the program now I will run it so now you can see your for loop started with value 1 2 3 4 and when the control variable got the value 5 the if loop evaluated to be true and break statement got executed and then the for loop is finished right the control will come out and this print statement is printed uh, as the last line you can see here so here if you increase the range also there is no difference in the program so now if i give 100 now you can see this will go from 1 to 99 but still when the number reaches 5 break will execute and your loop will stop so i will just save it i will run it 
So here you can see the output remains the same because the range values start with 1, 2, 3, 4. When it reaches 5, for loop will be stopped. Right? Now let us continue with the slides. Now next we are going to study about the continue statement. Right? So the purpose of continue statement is that it skips the statement in the loop after you see the continue keyword. Okay. Now the execution continues with the next iteration of the loop until the loop finishes. So continue is not going to stop the loop, but the statements following a continue will be ignored uh, and it will go to the beginning of the loop. Right. So when we see the example, you will understand. So continue also alters the normal flow of program execution. Now for syntax, you just have to write this word continue. Now to explain the continue statement, we are going to take the same example. Uh, which we have used to explain the break statement. Okay, so here we have a for loop which will run from 1 to 10. So this body is supposed to work uh, 10 times. Now inside the for loop we have five statements. Okay, so this is statement number 1, 2, 3, then 4 and 5. Right now, just like break within a condition, you can give the keyword continue. I will make the check for two so that we will hit continue faster, right? So first the value one will be loaded into I. The first statement will be executed. Second statement will be executed. Third will be executed. Then I will check whether the value of I is equal to two. But right now the value of I is one. So this is false. So continue will not be executed. Following that statement four will be executed. Statement five will be executed then control will go back to 4. Now I load the second value from the range. So the value of i will become 2. Then I will come into 4. It will execute the first statement, second statement and the third statement. Then it will check whether value of i is equal to equal to 2. Now this is true. Now when it is true, the continue will be executed. So when continue is executed, what happens is that the two statements following continue will not get executed only for this iteration. Continue will just push the control from here all the way back to 4. So that's the difference between continue and break. Break will take the control outside of for loop. Continue will just skip the statement below it and take the control back to the beginning of 4. So now uh, I will take the next value from the range. That number will be loaded into I. Again, uh, the first statement will be executed. Second will be executed. The third will be executed. Now, when I check this condition, this is going to be false because now the value of I is 3. Then, as this is false, continue will not be executed. So, statement 4 and statement 5 will get executed. Right, so that is the job of continue. So, whenever the interpreter sees continue, immediately the control will go to the beginning of the loop. The statements following continue inside the loop will be skipped for this iteration of the loop. But when you encounter break, the loop is finished. Right, the control will jump out of the loop and the program will just go forward. All right, so now let us see a sample program. Now we are going to see an example program in which I want to print numbers from 1 to 10 except 5. So this program should print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 should not be printed and then it should continue with 6, 7, 8, 9 until 10. Okay. So I have a for loop here. So based on the indentation, you can understand this much part is the body of the for loop and this continue comes inside the if statement and the last print statement is outside of for which prints uh, for loop has finished so here you can see the range starts with 1 it ends at 11 so our range is going to end at 10 with step value 1 so the range value is going to be 1 2 3 4 5 6 up till 10 right so let us see initially value 1 will be loaded into the control variable right num then i will check whether num is equal to equal to 5 no this is false so when if condition is false continue will not get executed the control will go to the next line which is this print statement it will print the number value so this will be our output it will print 
number value is equal to one because that is a value of num all right now the control will go back to the for loop now it will load the second value from the range to the control variable num now i will check whether two equal to equal to five it is false continue will not get executed the print statement will print number value is equal to two now the control will come back again to the for loop now next time the third uh, value from the range will be loaded to num i will check whether three equal to equal to five again it is false so i will print three over there again i will come to for loop next i will load the uh, next value from the range which is four i will check four equal to equal to five again it is false i will print uh, the value 4 and now we are going to see a difference right then it will load the next number from the range which is 5 so now 5 will be loaded to num now the if condition will check 5 equal to equal to 5 now this will evaluate to true now when this evaluates to true continue will get executed and when continue executes immediately the control will be pushed to the beginning of the for loop so this print statement will not get executed for this iteration so number five will not get printed the control will go back to four uh, now four will select the next value in the range so six will be loaded to num then again i will check six equal to equal to five now you can see this is false so continue will not get executed so the print statement will get executed so in this case, I will print the number value equal to six and then it will continue up till 10. Uh, for loop will be finished because we have taken all the values in the range. And then I will print uh, the last statement for loop has finished, all right? So in this way, I just avoided printing of five by using the continue statement. So you should understand continue is not used to stop a loop so it is just used to continue the loop from that point back uh, to the beginning right again the loop will start with the next iteration now our program is ready i will just run the program so now you can see the result it is printing one two three four and after that five is missing because the continue statement executed so the control went back to the beginning of the loop without uh, executing this print statement right now if you want to modify this program not to print five and six all you have to do is modify this condition so i will say here or and then i will write num equal to equal to six so now what will happen continue will get executed when the num gets value five or num gets value 6 so now we can see 5 and 6 both will not be printed in the output so let us run this so now i'll just save this program and now i'll run it so here you can see after 4 you can see 5 and 6 is missing all right then it goes to 7 8 9 and 10 and then the loop stops so you should understand this very clearly continue is not going to terminate the loop it is just going to terminate the subsequent statements for this iteration, right? Continue will just take the control back to the beginning of the loop so that loop can continue. So now let us continue with the slides. Now next we are going to see the concept of nested loops, okay? So it just means that you can write a loop inside another loop right and with python there is no limit on the number of levels of nested loops that you can write inside a python program right so you can write a for loop inside a while loop inside another for loop inside another for loop right it's up to you based on the requirement of the program you can have any number of loops built inside another loop right so any number of for while loop can be nested or put inside uh, for or while loops right so let us see an example so just uh, to make it clear to you what do you mean by nested loop you can have a for loop with some range value now inside this for loop you can have a block 
of statements. Right? Now inside, when you write this statement, one of those statement can be a while loop with a condition check. So inside while loop, you can have a set of statements. And one of those statements can be again a for loop. So inside that for loop, you can have a set of statements. So this is the example of nested loops. So here you can see inside this for loop, I have a while loop and inside this while loop, I have another for loop. So Python doesn't limit on how many number of loops you can create inside another loop, right? So you can keep on going in based on the logic requirement of the problem in hand, okay? So now let us see a sample program so this will be our first program to print a pattern we have to print numbers like this okay like a triangle okay so the first line it should print only one the second line it should print one and two the third line it should print one two three and fourth line it should print one two three four all right so here the input that your program requires is the limit to generate the pattern so if you enter four it means that it has to print four lines and the output will be as shown here. If you enter value as five, then it will have one more line in the output like this. Now let us trace this program. Assume that when the first line executed, the user input the value as four. So four is stored into variable num. So I will just write the variables over here. We have variable num. We have variable i, we have variable j, and we have the output, which is supposed to be printed out. So initially, the value of num becomes 4 because I entered 4 through the keyboard. Now let me start with the first for loop, right? Now the first for loop gets value from this range. And this range says that it goes from 1 to 5, right? Because here num plus 1 is 5 because the value of num is 4, right? Now what is the values available in this range? It is 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? Because uh, it will stop one value before the stop value, which is num plus 1, 5. So now this is the value available inside this range, okay? So now the first value from the range will be loaded to the control variable i, and then the control will go to the inner for loop, all right? Now in inner for loop, we have the control variable j, and here you see the inner for loop range works with the current value of i. So each time when the control comes to inner loop, the value of i is going to change because you see here the value of i will change from one to two to three to four each time, all right? So we'll reach there uh, when we actually uh, proceed in the program. So right now, we will see what is this range. So this range goes from 1 to, what is the current value of i? You see the value of i is loaded with 1. So the value of i is 1. So i plus 1 is 2. So this is range 1 comma 2. So this range has only one element in it, which is 1. So that is loaded into j, control variable. So now j has value 1. Now inside this for loop, I have a print statement and that is used to print j, right? So what is the value of j? 1. So 1 will be printed and after that it will print a space, okay? So anyway that space is uh, not visible to us so it's over there so now here you see this inner for loop is finished because the range value uh, the range has only one value and we have taken it the control will go to the last print statement now you see nothing is inside the print statement so it will just push the cursor to the next line okay so it will be waiting here so now you see i have just printed my first one okay so now let us start with the second iteration. The value 2 will be loaded into i. Okay, so now the value of i is 2. So now the control goes to the inner for loop. So what happens here? Now the range value is changed. Now it is 1 comma. Now the value of i is 2. So 2 plus 1 is 3. Now the values available inside this range is 1 and 2 
one number less than three, right? So there are two numbers available inside this range. So now the first number will be loaded into J. Now it will print the value of J. So one will be printed here. And after that, we will be printing a space. So a space will be printed, okay? Then it will, the control will come back to the inner for loop because there is one more value to be picked from the range. So two will be loaded to J next. So the value of J will become two. Now it will go to the print statement. It will print the value of J. So now two will be printed. After that, a space will be printed. And now you see both values in the range are taken. So the inner loop is finished. So now this print statement will be printed. The cursor will come to the next line. And now I will go back to my outer for loop again. So now we are going to start with the third iteration. Now the third value from the range will be picked and loaded into the control variable i. So now i has value 3. All right. So now we will come here. Now the control will go to the inner loop. Now there I will check the range value now. Now it goes from 1 to i plus 1. So here you see the current value of i is 3. So it is 4. So what will be the values in range? It will be 1, 2, and 3. Right? So now you see the inner loop has to run three times. So now the first value 1 will be loaded to j. So the value of j will become 1. It will be printed out. So 1 will be printed. And after that a space will be printed. The control will come back to the inner for loop. 2 will be loaded to j. Then 2 will be printed. After that, a space will be printed by this end. Then control will come back to again to the inner loop. 3 will be loaded to J. All right. Then 3 will be printed with a space after that. Now we see the inner loop is finished because we have taken all the three values from the range. All right. So now the outer print statement will be printed. The cursor will come to the next line. Now I'll go to the fourth iteration of my for loop. Now this is going to be the last iteration, all right? So now the last value four will be loaded into variable i, all right? So now the value of i is four. So now this range you can see, it is going from one to five, i plus one is five. So now what is the value of this range? It is one, two, three, and four. So now you can understand the inner loop is going to execute four times, all right? So now the first value will be loaded into J. So J will have value one again, all right? Then J will be printed. So one will be printed with a space. Then again, control will come to the inner loop. The second value will be loaded to J. It will be printed out. So two will be printed with a space. Then again, the control will come to the inner loop. Three will be loaded to J then it will be printed with a space and after that the control will go back to the inner loop it will take the last value from the range four will be loaded to j and it will be printed out after that a space now you see the inner for loop has finished it has taken all the four values from the range now the last print statement will execute the cursor will come to the next line the control will come back to four now you see the outer for loop also finished executing all the values in its range. So now the program will terminate. Now we have exactly the output that we want. You can see here 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So now let us run this program and see the result. Okay, so now our program is ready. So I'll just run it. Now it will ask for uh, the number of lines uh, that my program has to print the pattern for. Uh, so I will enter number four. I press enter. So here you can see the pattern is coming properly, right? So now I can run the program again. And this time if I enter value 10, so now the same number pattern will be generated for 10 different lines, okay? So here you can see it will come like this one one two one two three four it goes like that until it reaches 10 all right so that's it for this video 
in the next video we will be seeing sample programs for this chapter and in that video you will get more experience in using for loop and while loop to solve different kinds of problems.